a little bit how this looks um, in juvenile justice. So girls make up about 30% of youth population arrest rates, and that has been growing steadily, particularly within the last decade. But it's been growing steadily, not because the actual number of youth arrests have gone up. In fact, they're decreasing for both boys and girls. The peak was the mid-90s, like 96. But girls' arrests are not going down as quickly as boys' arrests, and that's why you see that increase proportionally within the juvenile justice system. There's really actually pretty strong consensus amongst the people who know, I guess, that, um, that, they're, that they're, the girls are getting overrepresented not because girls are becoming more violent or because they're somehow doing more bad things, but because there's been significant changes in sentencing and policing practices. And one of those is just a much higher emphasis on bringing kids into the justice system with those low-level assault, assault charges, like do, um, domestic violence assault for charges. So those where they may not have been brought before, not prosecuted before, they are now. So you see more girls kind of getting caught up in the system because in the next couple slides we'll see that tends to be a huge driver of why girls get involved in the general justice system. Um, there's also some evidence that there's some policing differences. So amongst runaway girls and runaway boys, police tend to, tend to pick up girls more often and bring them in. So this is just a nice quote. The recognition some parents turn to the courts to enforce their authority is thought to be a primary reason for many girls' presence in the juvenile justice system. Yeah, um, from what I've read, they really tend to focus on that mother-daughter relationship, um, that there's something about, that there's actually tends to be more conflict and violence even within girls with moms in the same home than they'll have with their boys. And it, I think some of the theory is that um, they're just kind of more concerned about controlling their girls' behavior than their boys. So the boys may go out and do stuff that's against <coughs> family rules or whatever, but they're just like, they're not going to step up and be as assertive with their boys or call the cops, but with the girls, they will, because they want to, maybe it's driven by more fear for their well-being or whatever it is, you know, then you start getting into like psychodynamic right. <laughs> theories of what's going on. Less likely to be a male in the picture as well, so oh, in the, house. In the home, mm -hmm. so you have a, a female authority figure who's trying to grapple with a man and a female, and she's going to be, perceive herself more skilled than you know, and with a female, and as well as the, the perception of moray, the morays of males, who, you know, how uh, in many circumstances moms can view the morays of, as the data would suggest, that more aggressiveness, more assertiveness is tolerable. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Certainly, the, something about girls having sex and being out of control. Mm -hmm. that, Parents, the police, <coughs> judges, they, they seem to come down much harder. Yeah. Because yeah. I think when you yeah. look at someone who looks like you going down a pathway, you know, I think it tends to confront you more than looking at somebody who doesn't look like you, a boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so at least that can be from a, just a descriptive perspective of where it's going on. Is there a misperception that um, the potential to get deeper into the juvenile justice system may somehow be? less problematic for girls than for boys? Like they have a visual picture of, you know, teenage or young adult males getting locked up, and but clearly that, that doesn't happen to girls. Like this is just a way to control their behavior in the short right. term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, because with the relational thing, we, we assume that girls will learn their lesson by one encounter. You know, mm -hmm. They'll get it, whereas mm -hmm. boys are thick-headed and mm -hmm. dumb and not. You know, <coughs> How, how often do you get calls from moms about their daughters as compared to down in detention as compared to getting calls about? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't get very many calls at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but definitely, I would say, if I had to say, it was probably be more girls than you know parents having concerns about their girls. How about it? How about an echo blend? I mean, you could, you know, could from just both your perspectives is. I mean, I, I don't know if calls and concerns right. related to, to this, but... <clears throat> I, I tend to get calls from moms concerned about their sons and their medications being stopped. And That's again, right. this kind of yeah. control issue of, like, right. it's going to be out of control. Yeah. I feel like there, there's, there's such a uh, huge differences in this, 
uh, SES of different people, so that sort of is drives, what yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Hard. Mm -hmm. it's more obvious than gender differences. Also, in Jerry in particular, the girl population is, oh, not at Echo Glen, no, it's lower, but Echo Glen, no. Yeah, about the girls. Yeah, about yeah. the girls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the families, um, the fit coaches certainly report a lot of, you know, subtle encouragement in, in the two parent families where, where the male is, is the, the <coughs> father or male caregiver is sending messages like, keep it up, man, do it, yeah. you know, keep, keep going, you just, you got to get better at it, that's all, you can't get caught. And I you never hear them reporting messages like that from a female caregiver. Yeah, one, one of the things we're going to talk about is the ways in which these girls are so isolated because there really is not a norm um, as much yeah. and uh, they tend to have stronger relationships maybe with a boyfriend but not in the, not a larger social group like boys, well generally more, they're doing that as part of like a larger kind of norm. Yeah. Um, so this again, this is just uh, the Casey Foundation stuff on the overrepresentation and detention for minor offenses. So you'll see the girls, it's kind of hard to see, but the girls is the one, it's technically red, but it's kind of black. So they're overrepresented um, for minor offenses and probation and parole, parole violations and detention. So some of the JDAI work is actually working pretty well so the girls are getting the alternatives to detention instead of detention. But this is really where it gets tough. So. Again, federally, you are not supposed to lock up status offenders, so runaways, truancy kids. You're not supposed to lock them up. And Washington State's been out of compliance now for years because we had the Becca Bill. And because there was the girl who was killed who was a runaway, so they passed the Becca Bill so that you could put status offenders in secure settings. And there were a bunch of secure residential centers kind of across the state that, um, that these kids would go to. And so Washington State was not getting, was actually getting penalized and not getting the full amount that they could get of federal dollars because of this. I think we might technically be in compliance now, so we might be getting some of that money back or all that money back. Snohomish had one. They're closing because they can't fund them. So Snoh Snohomish County had one. Snohomish County had one. But you know, when you would go and talk to Craig Daly, who's the administrator over Snohomish County, he would tell you it's they're trying to save kids, and these centers are clean, the kids aren't shackled, they have treatment programming in there, and like they just feel like they cannot, if they can catch the kid and get them into some programming, they, they feel like they can save their lives. So it is, it's a, it's a tough, you know, situation just to try to talk about ways in which you can at least put door handles on the inside of the doors and it's not secure anymore or something, you figure out what to do. But that's, that is one way that um, other jurisdictions are trying to kind of manage this <coughs> issue is creating more shelter care placements for kids, but you do lose some. The summer just going to go back out on the street, you know. Um, this is actually Washington State data. So this is just mirroring what you see nationally, but I actually ran this with AOC data from the court risk assessment. So um, you can see here that among uh, misdemeanor assaults, you got girls at like 24% and boys at 13%, um, nonviolent felonies, girls at 35 and then you can see like felony assault guys are at 31 and girls are at like 17%. So again, it's just mirroring that you kind of tend to see a little bit different pattern of offending, not exclusively because you still have a thousand girls, <laughs> you know, 1,700 girls who had felony assaults, right? But there's some patterns is it, there. This is in Washington State? This is specific to Washington State. Yeah, I, I think another difference is that um, Washington has pretty liberal commitment laws when it comes to minors, so can, can people turn to the, cr the criminal justice system to try to gain some control. Yeah, right. Cause Liberal we in the sense that it's hard to do. It's hard to commit kids in our state relative to other states. In mental health. Yes. Yeah. Because kids can sign themselves out of treatment at 13, so the only agent, you know, public agency that has teeth is juvenile justice. Um, and this is, again, from the risk assessment. This is just looking at rates. So the rate of runaways is a little higher for girls. Home conflicts a little higher. Girls are less likely to be close to a father. Um, sex abuse is higher, and school conduct is a little bit lower for girls, interestingly. I don't know really why I threw that in there, but I did. <laughs> so again, this idea that um, justice-involved girls, really, it's hard for them to find a safe place. Statistically, they're experiencing a lot of conflict at home. 
they're not um, as accepted within a larger peer group. They tend to rate a boyfriend as their best friend. Um, corrections officers don't like girls as much. They don't tend to be as accepted once they get into the system. People don't like working with girls. Um, they have more conflict at school. So they're just, you know, there's just no place for them. <laughs> Poor girls. Another nice quote, the violent girl is at once more socially conscious, because girls are more aware, and more brutalized than the violent schoolboy and the least connected to her family. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit about sex abuse. Um, so, girls who are violent report higher fears of sexual and physical assault at home. Um, comprehensive study of the effects of childhood sex abuse, sexualized behavior, and aggression were strongest outcomes. This is just kind of pointing to that particular pathway that that early victimization really has implications for later, not only sexualized behavior, getting um, involved in unhealthy relationships, but even aggression and violence, which you can see kind of coming out and driving some juvenile justice involvement. The rates are really high. So community rate for girls is 20% for any type, for some type of trauma. 70% for justice involved girls. It's higher than the rate for boys, which I can't exactly remember, but I think it might be around 40%, but that might not be exactly right. 63% um, had some, some PTSD symptoms, and almost half had current PTSD symptoms. And those with trauma symptoms were showing more distress and less self-restraint. So you just, dip, you know, as girls become more difficult to manage in correction settings, a really good place to start is, is there some trauma she's had in her past? And girls are more likely to be sexually assaulted, and they're more likely to die while incarcerated. So multiple risks. More likely to have a mental health disorder. It's higher in all categories of sex, psychotic disorders and substance abuse. Are they more likely to die from suicide or? Uh, I don't know. I need to look that up. I think it was a. Uh, um, Even less because of higher rates of, if I remember the data, higher rates of death through suicide. Well, I just want to. I think lower than males because of the use of males, consistent use of, of more lethal tools to commit suicide. Males need to use guns. So then they're more like to be a murder? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I need to look that up. It's got to be a low base for people. Right, yeah. 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 <laughs> but I, I'm not totally sure. It could be that they're coming in with more medical problems or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember female suicide in my. I'm trying to think in my work in juvenile justice or for a lot of female suicide. So I'm just looking at Maybe my own data. Medical complications. Yeah, trauma. I'm wondering yeah. if it might be medical complications. They just come in kind of with more, more issues. More yeah, health related. Okay. But the slides are more like the died during their adolescence? During incarceration. During incarceration. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So, if you weren't convinced just by the theory and research, maybe you're convinced now because um, there's so many pronounced needs for justice involved girls that we should be paying attention to. So, what is? How are people interpreting this, and what does it look like? Okay, <laughs> I included this. <laughs> I included this, even though it really doesn't make any sense. But what? Because <laughs> I'm going to explain it. So, people who are on the phone, I apologize. Um, so what this doesn't is, matter. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to explain it to you, and then I'll be completely clear. So what I have running down the left side, those very small markings, those are all principles of gender responsive practice. They're things like strength based, um, having good role models, skills based. Okay. On the top are all kind of the all the uh, important literature in this area, and people who have. Um, who have said what gender responsive principles should be. And it's just Xing across which ones are most common. Okay? That's what this 